Welcome to another episode of Shipper War, my review of The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smaug. Shipper War, when ship happens, I'm there. The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smaug is directed by Peter Jackson, and stars Ian McKellar, Martin Freeman, Orlando Bloom, Evangeline Lilly as the only real female lead, and then a bunch of other male actors. Now the premise of the story is basically the continuation from the first movie where you have Bilbo Baggins and the dwarves and they're still on this journey to their homeland so they can claim back their home from the fire-breathing dragon. The thing about this movie in comparison to the first one is that unlike the first one this movie is a lot more lively when it comes to the storytelling and just the overall action in the film. My issue with the first one is there was a lot of scenes in the movie that personally really bored me. There wasn't enough action, there was just not enough things that intrigued me enough to keep my attention throughout the whole movie. I felt myself drifting away in and out of the film. It just felt like they were just trying to drag out the story so they can, you know, make sense of making three movies out of one book and that's what it felt like. But this movie, on the other hand, doesn't feel like that whatsoever. It actually felt like they took too much from the book and they put it into the movie just to make it a very entertaining film because there's so much stuff going on in this movie that I was thinking to myself, what's going to happen in the third installment because so much happens in this one movie that I'm thinking to myself, what is your left for the third movie? So I came out of the theater actually excited to see the third movie because I want to see how they're going to continue on this story after giving us this movie that was overall superior to the first one in so many ways and it was just an overall very entertaining movie every second. Within the first scene there's just this one cameo that kind of gives you an idea of what the rest of the movie is going to be because this cameo appears and you're like haha that's funny and clever and then the whole movie is just funny and clever and just an overall excellent movie. So from the first scene on I have to say I really enjoyed this film. Now if I had to nitpick anything in this movie the first thing is <laughs> the romance in this movie. Yes, I enjoy romance in movies. That's normally the stuff that I really root for in films. But I felt like the romance in this movie, or the love triangle if you want to call it, was just unnecessary. I don't know how it played out in the book, but basically the romance is with the only female character in the whole movie that has any role, and that's Evangeline Lilly's character, who I don't know her name, but she plays this elf who is freaking a badass chick and she has a love triangle with certain characters and I'm not going to go into see the movie and you know what I'm talking about but overall I thought they weren't necessary like the love triangle I don't know if it plays a big part in the overall story those who read the book correct me if I'm wrong but I didn't feel like it was necessary into this film I actually was turned off by it a couple of times I'm like you know what that doesn't really have to be there it's kind of taking away from the story it's kind of taking away from her character because now she's doing this whole love triangle thing for what reason she should just be out there fighting and being a badass chick but no she's doing this love triangle thing like stop it just get her away from that because it doesn't add anything to her character and overall it really didn't add anything to the movie at least not for me the other thing I will nitpick at is the CGI yes I'm going to go there there was a sequence at the end of the film where I thought the CGI was a little off and I don't know if it was supposed to look like that but I picked up on it and it kind of took me out of the scene. I saw, I watched the movie in 3D so that's maybe why I noticed it more, I don't know. But those are really nitpicks that I can really say negative about this movie because overall this film was outstanding. I really enjoyed it. It kept me entertained. It brought faith back into me for this Hobbit series. I'm looking forward to the third installment and seeing how this story continues. But overall, I recommend this movie to anybody who's a fan of the series, you're a fan of The Lord of the Rings, you're a fan of The Hobbit, go see this because you are going to enjoy it, especially when Legolas comes back and you're seeing him doing his badass, you know, arrow and fighting things. So that is all for this episode of Ship Award. Thank you for watching and if you haven't already, please subscribe. The Hunger Games Catching Fire stars Jennifer Lawrence and a bunch of very talented actors and actresses who I'm not going to name because the list will just be endless because there's so many of them. And the premise of the story is basically it takes place after
after the Hunger Games, the first installment to this franchise, Katniss is back in District 12. She's just living life, doing what she does, hanging with Gail. Then the story just progresses into then being the victory tour. And then the story continues on to the actual Hunger Games.